Good evening and welcome to Evening Prayer for Wednesday, November the 4th. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Joyous light of glory of the immortal Father, heavenly, holy, blessed Jesus Christ, we have come to the setting of the sun and we look to the evening light. We sing to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy of being praised with pure voices forever. O Son of God, O giver of life, the universe proclaims your glory. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last. Amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High. Herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. Praise to you, O Christ. O come, let us worship him. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for the evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our constant companion on the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope among us, that we may recognize you as you are revealed in the scriptures and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for your name's sake. Amen. The Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand, till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord sends forth from Zion your mighty scepter. Rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people will offer themselves freely on the day of your power in holy garments. From the womb of the morning, the dew of your youth will be yours. The Lord is sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. He will shatter kings on the day of his wrath. He will execute judgment among the nations, filling them with corpses. He will shatter chiefs over the wide earth. He will drink from the brook by the way. Therefore, he will lift up his head. New Testament reading tonight is from a continuation of our reading from Matthew chapter 22. The same day Sadducees came to Jesus, who say there is no resurrection, and they asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses said if a man dies having no children, his brother must marry the widow and raise up children for his brother. Now there were seven brothers among us. The first married and died, and having no children left his wife, having no children left his wife to his brother. So too the second and the third down to the seventh. After them all, the woman died. In the resurrection, therefore, of the seven, whose wife will she be? For they all had her. But Jesus answered them, You are wrong, because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what it was said to you by God? I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. And when the crowd heard it, they were astonished at his teaching. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, what is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? They said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David in the spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word. Not from, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. Let's see, our devotion with Martin Luther this evening is based on Galatians 5, 25 to 26. If we live by our spiritual nature, then our lives need to conform to our spiritual nature. We can't allow ourselves to act arrogantly and to provoke or envy. Avoid arrogance. When you are praised, you should know that it is not you who are being praised, but Christ, in whom all praise and honor belong. The fact that you may teach in a godly way and live a holy life are not your gifts, but God's. So it's not you being praised, but God in you. If you acknowledge this, you won't get out of line. You won't become proud because of this praise. For what do you have that wasn't given to you? 1 Corinthians 4, 7. Instead, you will give God the glory. You will also not allow yourself to give up your calling because of abuse, disgrace, and persecution. 
God covers our glory with shame by his special grace. He covers it with the world's bitter hatred, persecution, and blasphemy. Furthermore, we may face contempt and ingratitude from our own followers, peasants, townspeople, and nobles. Though hidden and inward, their animosity toward and persecution of the gospel is more harmful than the enemies who persecute openly. God allows this so we don't become proud of our gifts. This millstone must be hung around our necks so that we will not be infected by the plague of honoring ourselves. Certainly, many of our own followers honor us because we are in official positions as preachers. But for everyone who honors us, there are a hundred who hate, despise, and persecute us. The blasphemy and persecution from our opponents, combined with the contempt, ingratitude, and secret hatred from our own followers, is such a lovely sight that delights us so much we easily forget all about personal glory. As a result, we rejoice in the Lord and stay in line. We gather in the Apostles' Creed and the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Ugh. Excuse me. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And as it is every Wednesday, we'll pray the shorter list. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us, spare all the dying. From all sin, from all evil, from the devil's might, from the devil's wiles, from your wrath and from hell's torment, from sudden and evil death, good Lord, deliver them. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the grace of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Help them, good Lord. In the hour of death, on the day of judgment, help them, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, good Lord. To comfort all the dying, to forgive them all their sins, to lead them out of this misery into eternal life, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. O God, you have commanded us to love you above all things and our neighbors as ourselves. Grant us the spirit to think and do what is pleasing in your sight, that our faith in you may never waver, and our love for one another may not falter. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our shorter devotion with Martin Luther tonight is based on Psalm 3716. Better is the little that the righteous has than the abundance of many wicked. Treasures in heaven. But a Christian does not grasp things for himself this way. He has invested his treasures in heaven, in the lap of God, and says, Dear Lord, I know that thou hast more. Thou hast more than it would ever be possible for thee to distribute. With thee I shall never suffer want, for if necessary, the heavens will have to rain down guldens. Be thou my coffer and cellar and loft. In thee I have my treasure. If I have thee, I have enough. These are the real Christians. 
If only we could believe there would be no want. Our Lord God is a good goldsmith who can turn one gulden into more than a hundred thousand. It does not depend on cash reserves, and he who has an unbelieving heart will not get as far with a thousand guldens as he who trusts God will get with one gulden. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.